Welcome back to the Sports Source. This segment brought to you by A.G. Hines Company. Uh, folks, when it comes to uh, state-of-the-art, cutting-edge building materials and tools, A.G. Hines Company is the place for you to begin your, your search if you're going to do a, a project, do-it-yourself project at your, your own home. They can help you build energy efficient, cost efficient, and they've got 100 years, more than 100 years of expertise to help you figure out exactly what you need and to walk through that project step by step. They are the best in East Tennessee, aghines.com to learn more. All right, let's welcome in the next longtime media member here, right here, Bob Hodge. Bob, thanks for joining well, us today. Here. All right. Um, like I said, we're packed today, so let's just start racing through this. There was a big national story that had media all over the country discussing it this week, and that was the SEC's vote on the SEC scheduling. Would they go? To, would they stay with eight games? Would they go to nine games? Everybody wanted them to go to nine games, or they could just punt and we'll decide later. And that's kind of what they did. Let's go ahead and talk about this thing. I think it's interesting. Let's show you. I thought this was funny. Greg Sankey strutted up to the podium on Monday, the SEC commissioner, and he said, a league at the forefront of college athletics doesn't stand still. This is a league at the forefront of college athletics. <laughs> he also said, if all you do is chase money, you make really bad decisions. And I'm watching that in college sports right now. We won't do that here. All right, let's go to the next graphic. This is on Thursday after they stood still in hopes of making more money. Uh, over time, there was supposed to be some laughter there. That was smart. <laughs> smart uh, shacks. All right. Uh, over time, we won't be shying away from anything. We just didn't add another game during a period of transition. If you're that impatient, I'm glad you're not running a conference. Ooh, kind of a little smart alecky dig there. <laughs> We're going to use that ability to look deeply at how we walk through issues, how we deal with change around the playoff, how we impact our media partner in a positive way, blah, 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 gobbledygook nonsense. <laughs> uh, back in 2020, he ends, back in 2020, I didn't act quickly enough, they said. We thrived, and we'll continue to thrive. Ooh, <laughs> cocky. <laughs> Let's move to the uh, next graph here. Here's what they did. No vote on the long-term plan. They approved a one-year stopgap schedule for 2024 only. Divisions will not be used, so those are dead. Only the two best teams will advance to the SEC title game. Previous 2024 SEC games will not be used. Those will be replaced by a schedule based on fairness. <laughs> Nobody will think that. And then uh, trying to maintain most of the important rivalries. That means Tennessee will likely get, they'll definitely get Vanderbilt, likely get Alabama too. Fans will be, uh, foes will be announced on Wednesday night, June 14th. Okay, here were some of the roadblocks. Despite Greg Sankey <laughs> saying money follows, it doesn't lead, SEC presidents were pretty sure that it was all about the money. They couldn't agree on nine games because, one, ESPN wouldn't pay them more for the added games. Two, fear that extra games could cost them playoff bids, which means cash. Three, loss of a home game's worth of revenue every other season because you're going to be playing five on the road one year, four on the road, the next in the SEC. And there's actually a fourth one that could go up there as well, and that's they didn't want to spend money to cancel games, to buy out games they've already lined up in non-conference. Interestingly enough, at the bottom of the poor, penniless SEC there, market research firm Navigate estimates that SEC schools will make $100 million each by 2028. No, oh, and they don't have two dimes to rub together. <laughs> poor little pitiful SEC. All right. Jimmy, you know where I come down on this thing. I think people can tell. I cannot. You were down there. You were down there. What was the reaction to you? I mean, we all thought yeah. Sankey wants nine, and then we came out and said that Monday, it's like he's going to strong arm this. He's mm -hmm. powerful, most powerful man in sports. No, I don't think that anymore. I think his presidents are more powerful. I think that uh, if Mike Slive would have wanted it, he'd have got it. I think if Roy Kramer would have wanted it, he'd have got it. I was really surprised. And I'm going to tell you, I believe Sankey on Monday thought he had the votes. He really did. Now, I'll add one other to the Go equation. Ahead. There were teams that also wanted to become bowl eligible. That yeah, was which, a factor. Which also, to, money. money. Yeah, so, so there's five, and they're all money-related. So, uh, But as, as the week went on, you could tell – that Sankey was, get, was frustrated. He would show up at press conferences, and it looked like Eeyore. So I, I'm like, man, this is going to be interesting, because you could tell that things weren't going the way he wanted to. He really got peeved when he was asked. Athletic directors and coaches have said, we don't have enough information to make a decision. And he's like, well, that's an interesting perspective. He said, I don't think one more sheet of paper is, is going to convince anybody. So he, he, you could tell. Now, by the time a he few finally announced green it, green sheets of paper. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> from ESPN would have done it. Yeah, by the time he announced it, I, I saw somebody finally. It looked like he was just relieved. Yeah, I didn't see as much disappointment and anger. It's like, God, we finally got this over. But uh, I think he was really surprised that it came down the way it did. 
All right, uh, gentlemen, I'll let you. Bob, you're, you're new to the panel t today. Your thoughts on this? Um, you've got down here smart move, dumb move. Yeah. I don't even think you should have put smart move as a choice. <laughs> I just thought you should have gone straight to dumb move. <laughs> because I, I, I don't understand, and I, I get the money thing and all that. Um, I, I just don't understand how come if you're at the forefront, if you're the guys yeah. who set the tone for yeah. everybody else, and you shirk away from playing another SEC team, yeah. I, I, it, it just looks horrible. It's a, it's a bad thing. You know, the media, we can sit here and talk about it being dumb and everything. Okay, in the end, that doesn't have much impact. But it, at some point, it is going to catch up with you somewhere, I think. We may be talking about that in a segment coming up. Yeah. But I just think to sit there and not bring another SEC team onto the schedule, I, I just think that's just ridiculous. Yes, let's keep playing – Tennessee Martin and Chattanooga yeah. and Tech, great, fantastic. Love those games. Marlon, well, your I, thoughts? I think more than anything else is exactly what you said. If we're, if we're the, the big dog conference and, and everybody follows our lead, um, what is it, one other conference that, that's, that's sticking the with ACC. Yeah, so mm -hmm. it's like, um, you know, if we're, if we're the leader and then you step out as the leader of the conference and say, hey, here's what we're going to do, and then you give this impression that we're going to nine, mm -hmm. Uh, and then kind of get back yeah. in the corner and, and tuck your tail and say, you know what, we're going to stick yeah. with how it is. Uh, I think that makes us look weak as a as a as a unit as a conference around the, the rest of the country. So I didn't like that aspect of it. it, yeah, it go ahead. Chuck. It kind of felt like didn't some key people kind of change their minds a little bit? What yeah. there some well, going? Saban was the big one. Right, that had right. been Pushing for years for playing nothing yeah. but Power Five. Then he saw that it was Tennessee, Auburn. I get LSU too. Let's rethink this. Yeah. <laughs> well, quickly on Saban, I asked him directly. I said, "You have favored nine for years. Do you still favor nine? Well, you know, I think we need to play Division One opponents, and and that's you know, and maybe some Power mm. Five teams. So, yeah. So he backed off. Yeah, I, I think the theory: if it's not broke, don't fix it. In terms of getting people into those four, yes, SEC teams into those four playoff spots, and as and, and that's, I think they just said doing nothing mm -hmm. is better than doing the wrong thing. Here's right. the problem, though, yeah. and this is where the media thing could come back to bite them. In the past, uh, teams, I think, most more times than not, the SEC has been given the benefit of the doubt. In terms of, you know, yeah. remember the first BCS title game that was two teams from the same conference was, t it was Alabama versus LSU. The SEC always gets more teams yeah. in the playoffs, et cetera, et cetera. Not always, but usually. Mm -hmm. um, they get the benefit of the doubt. That doesn't have to go on forever. The days, if everybody right. in the country is saying, Great wow, point. they're cowardly. <laughs> You're no longer getting the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> then it will come back to, to bite them in the butt, and they can sit there and count their dollars. That's the thing that bothers me. I get the money part, but the, the fact that you're going to be making $100 million a school, and yet every decision they make is for every, every dime they can collect. Why are you dumping BYU to play Virginia? We need the money. Oh, yeah, your school looks like it's just going to blow. How, yeah. how many more buildings can they build over there? They don't have any money yet. You can't drive. I don't, I don't even know the campus anymore. They need their seventh practice field. It, yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they're about to start work again. More facilities. It's like, what are you doing? At some point, do you ever care about the fans? You know, and, and I'll, just, I'll just say this. For Sankey's cocky comments, we'll thrive now as we did then. And he made a comment about, well, I think the final game last year was 65-7. to seven. Yeah, that wasn't the whole SEC. That wasn't Vanderbilt out there, Greg. That was Georgia. That wasn't the SEC. That's Georgia. Uh, I would just remind him and them of a few things. 100 years ago, the number one sports in this country were boxing and horse racing. 50 years ago, the number one sport in this country was baseball. My whole life, the number one college basketball conference has been the ACC. It's not anymore. The SEC can talk tough and walk tough. But if you don't act tough, nobody's going to take you for tough much longer. And he ought to know that. And his presidents ought to pay attention to that. And that includes Randy Boyd and Danny White, who supported eight games, which was a cowardly act. I love everything they're doing. But if you're not big enough and brave enough to, at the University of Tennessee, say, we want to play better teams than Austin P and better teams than Texas San Antonio, then leave the SEC altogether. Get out. You, hey, go to the Southern Conference, man. You go, you go undefeated, and people still pay to go watch you play Elon. Go for it, baby. I just, it's disgusting. 
I don't think you should be the leader of a conference. <laughs> <laughs> I'm impatient, baby. And, I, see, and I'm the guy that would love, I would love that conference if you had somebody who led that way. What if, they go, to, what if they go to nine in two months? Well, that's great. Yeah. Great. Okay. Then I'll sit here and say that. Okay. Yeah. I brag. Who brags yeah. more on Tennessee's basketball schedule than I do? Yeah. I make a point of praising Rick Barnes in that schedule. He takes care of the fans. That's great. Football, they don't do it. They don't do it. And they, they ought to do it. It's pathetic. Uh, especially if you're going to convince people you're going to have to pay to come over here and watch Austin P because we need the money. I mean, I, if I'm a Utah well, fan and, and, and I'm paying and, him, I'm over there. I'm looking that, around the How campus. does that play into your coming entertainment district that you're going to have oh, down yeah. there? How mm -hmm. is that impacting Well, that, that way you can Austin play Elon P, and people will go. You know, but, I mean, and if you got Austin P on the schedule <laughs> instead of uh, another SEC game, uh, does that cost the people down there money? Yeah. I mean, it, it's splitting hair a little bit, but. I just I, look. I believe in playing the best. If you want to talk like you're the best, be the best. Yeah. Who do you, I mean, Brian Kelly this week at LSU? He didn't come down here to play Southern Miss. He said we want to play the best. I want Alabama on that schedule. Mm -hmm. Look at well, look at their future schedule. Look at their schedule this year. Uh, they've got USC on there. They've got a couple of Power Five teams, I think. Uh, but moving forward, you got leagues and you got schools in this league who are powering up against two or three Power Five teams in a season. When Missouri Tennessee wants did, to play nine. South Carolina. Missouri, mm -hmm. Missouri wants to play nine. We'll yeah. get to that later. South Carolina mm -hmm. has been – you look at their schedule moving forward. If Tennessee had Clemson as a non-conference every year, do you think they would also schedule North Carolina? No way in hell. Yeah. Do you think yeah. they would also go out and schedule uh, – I think they've got Virginia Tech. I think That's with Clemson. I just want to see some guts. If I'm going to spend money – and mm -hmm. here's the other thing. I host a television show where we cover 12 football games a year. There are five this year that Tennessee cannot lose. Okay, that's great. It's a win. Do you think I'm really excited about talking about the – do you think we're going to do a 90-minute breakdown of Austin P? Because I'm not. We'll be talking about the next game. And, and I'll and give I'll you 89 you, minutes of a preview of the next game. And I, I would tell you from a player's perspective, um, one of the things I wish I would have done, like I felt like going to play Oregon, yes, it was a, a beatdown both times we played them. Uh, but, man, it's super, super cool to say you got a chance to go play against – Marcus Mariota and mm -hmm. those kind of guys. Uh, so I would say from a player's perspective, for us, it's, it's we know our conference is tough anyways. It's hard to get up for a, a Austin P. Um, yeah. And it's hard to get up for a UT Martin where you know the game's going to be over by halftime. Uh, you come to this conference to go play against the best. Uh, and so for us, it's from a player perspective, it's, man, you want the excitement of going to go play against a big-time foe out of a different conference to say I played against them and then also go see a different site and, and go, you know, see what you got versus the big dogs. But money. <laughs> okay. Uh, when we come back. You make some money on those. <laughs> when we come back, is the SEC as well run now as it was under Mike Sly? We'll discuss that. Then UT schedule for 2024. Hoops into the top five. All kinds of stuff to come on the sports show. Come on back. <laughs>